Thomas Middleditch is starring in a new movie. <gasps> but this is no Silicon Valley. Think about having sex with a jar of salsa. Fortunately, this dialogue doesn't even matter. Middleditch is having his face and voice copied so that an artificial intelligence named Benjamin, that's it right there on the laptop, can stitch them into a new film using face swapping and vocal synthesis technology. Benjamin is a, is a program that Maniac over there designed. That's Ross Goodwin, a technologist at Google and a self-described gonzo data scientist. Goodwin worked with director Oscar Sharp, Middleditch, and Benjamin on their first AI film, Sunspring, which was licensed by Wired sister site Ars Technica in 2016. Sunspring was made for a 48-hour sci-fi film challenge. The team fed Benjamin thousands of science fiction film scripts and then had it write a new one. In a future with mass unemployment, young people are forced to sell blood. It's something I can do. You should see the boy and shut up. The idea was to see if the machine could write a screenplay that the filmmakers could work with. Benjamin is a machine, but Benjamin is also a story about machines. It's a story about how machines and creativity can play together and what we can learn from that. A big, honest idea. The AI comes up with the script. I have to uh, go to the skull. And it is our <laughs> duty to execute them as if the AI was Scorsese. Some lines in there we were like, what, what do mean? does this mean? Well, I, what does I Benjamin mean, mean by this? Anything. And after breaking it down, you know, the best you can do is interpret it because you can't ask him. That's right. That was kind of fun, just like really playing it with like the most earnest intent of some of the bizarrest lines. What are you doing? I don't want to be honest with you. You don't have to be a doctor. I'm not sure. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to see you too. What do you mean? After Sunspring, Sharp, Goodwin, and Benjamin teamed up again with, wait for it. Didn't we, David? David Hasselhoff. Activate Hoffbot. Okay, pal, pick me up. The dangerous world of a man who does not exist. For this second film, the human filmmakers tried to take a more collaborative approach with the AI. I, I don't like to think that I'm just making movies necessarily. My whole thing has always been, what haven't we done yet? What, what can we try? And the nice thing about cinema is there's still lots of room to try things. And so for this year's 48-hour film festival, they greenlit Benjamin to become a full auteur. This year, we are having the machine actually create the movie visually as well as writing the screenplay. Every decision is, is the computer's decision, and the movie, therefore, is directed by, written and directed by Benjamin. That's why Middleditch and the other actors are rambling and grimacing so that Benjamin can start building performances from their faces and voices. Benjamin constructed its new movie using scenes from public domain films, like this test scene from Night of the Living Dead. At the moment, we're not in the place where we can say, you know, it writes, there is a truck driving over the horizon and it, we can just conjure up an image of a truck. I'm a pretty girl. You are a pretty girl. <laughs> So instead, what we thought we'd do is let it, from its screenplay, select shots from uh, public domain films, and then, using whichever shots that it's picked, drop these actors and these lines of dialogue into that movie. Then, at the start of the 48-hour mark, the team armed Benjamin with the actors' recordings, the scripts, and the public domain films to begin creating new scenes that would be edited into a final movie. If this fails in its experiment, um, I'll be employable for the rest of time. And um, if it doesn't fail and it in fact works, then um, you know I may not be employable as an actor, but at least I will have been there at the moment when we realized we were going to be replaced by computers. <laughs> Even if the film isn't a narrative success, the creators say, it holds a mirror up to the technologies that are increasingly blurring the line between truth and fiction, both in the movies and in real That's life. That's so Benjamin. To help families. In the last year, researchers digitally produced a lip synced speech by former President Barack Obama. And the infrastructure that creates good new jobs. And users of so called deep fake technology put the faces of celebrities on the bodies of porn actors. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. It's become enough of an issue Someone. that director Jordan Peele made this Jordan PSA Peele. in April of this year. This is a dangerous time. A lot of times in movies you can't tell, but now you're watching news 
footage or interviews and you just can't tell if it's real or not, it's unsettling. Unsettling maybe, but the filmmakers might say that's the whole idea behind the project. Putting it in something that's more playful and entertaining is, is going to get a wider reach for that. It's going to help more people understand that this stuff can be done without needing armies of CG experts anymore. Good artists borrow, great artists steal. So perhaps uh, Benjamin will prove to be the greatest of us all. Or not. Just tell me where you're going. In the end, the script was classic Benjamin. I will be able to rescue non sequiturs and all. I am aware of that. What about the doctor? You can't do that. And because of processing time, only first tape. drafts of the face swaps we were, were ready by deadline. This, this scene business. shows perhaps the best face swapping, but it had to be cut to meet the contest requirements for length. That's enough. This is incredible. Still, the new film, which is called Zone Out, has its moments. You don't know where this is going. And it gives us a look at what happens when you unleash an AI on a creative project. Even this musical score was generated by an AI. You can judge for yourself. The director's cut, including the deleted scene, is up now on Wired sister site Ars Technica. How do you know what happens to that guy? I'm doing it for you. Are you sure you need a problem?